So I remember my sales manager at the time uh, having a conversation with him and I think we had to be in for maybe you know, 8.30 in the morning and that was to effectively prepare our people. Every single day of our sales teams had to come into the office and I was a sales manager, new sales manager, given this new branch to run. And um, my regional manager had said to me, because I didn't come in early to train my sales team, because I didn't have any salespeople at that time, I think it was maybe a couple of weeks in, and they told me that you don't wait till you've got your sales team to then start doing certain things. You do these things and then your sales team will follow. And ultimately what he was saying was, is you don't um, get the results, then become the successful person, the disciplined person. Effectively what you need to do, first of all, is you become the disciplined person and then you get the results. But I'm also a realist and I've got a seven-year-old, an 18-month-old and a, a five-week-old baby. Sometimes your sort of schedule is decided about, or more often than not, they decide what the schedule is and not me. So um, my normal routine up until my newborn uh, was born four or five weeks ago was that I was up sort of between 5 and 6 a.m. and I'd done 10 to 15 minutes of meditation. And it just gave me a much more balanced platform to start the day. So when I came into the office and I was sort of thrusted into the kind of hectic and busy environment where people were heavily relying on me to make decisions quickly, big decisions, financial decisions, decisions that would affect people's jobs. It allowed me to be much more balanced and much more controlled when I was actually about to make them. No, you don't, you, you, you kind of do get used to it, right, but it's not that pleasant. I mean, I still right now lie there, I wake up and I still think I could do with an extra half hour, an hour, I just sometimes just want to, but I understand that there's an element of discipline involved, that if you can manage to do that every day, then it's going to put you on a good, a good sort of path for the rest of the day. So it's like my first, because see when you get, the, the hardest bit is that when you wake up, is it actually just getting yourself out of your bed. See the minute, literally the second you step out of your bed, it's fine, it's no big deal. So, um, so I don't find it difficult, but I don't particularly enjoy it. I like to sleep. So, but I just understand that it's one of those things that if I want to, um, I have a bit of time to myself to meditate, to read, to learn, to improve, to go to the gym, to do whatever I want. If I want that extra time, it's just one of those things that I need to do. So it's a kind of non-negotiable, it's just one of those things that if I want to get better, I'm going to do. Without somebody there to supervise you, or you get to take the playoff, because no one's going to know the difference. Those are the things that make up success, and that's not motivation, that's discipline. If you are not familiar with Andy Frisella, I would recommend highly that you check out his podcast. He was talking about a big question, a big question with a lot of business owners of all ages that they talk about is how do I become successful? What does it take to become successful? Having the discipline to set standards for yourself that guarantee that success that you want. So basically the Andy Fusega one goes on to talk about how the question you want to be asking is not how do I become successful, more about is what are the habits that I must develop, the discipline that I must show in certain tasks to become successful. You know, the successful people do things develop standards, carry out tasks with absolute precision on a day-by-day -day basis because they know that's what they have to do to get to where they want to be. But I recently heard Ryan Serhant 
who's a huge real estate sales guy over in the US. But what he was effectively saying was that the average person listens far too much to their emotions and subsequently they make their decisions based on their emotions. So, you know, if they wake up one morning and they feel tired or they don't want to go to the gym that day or they don't feel like doing the sales figures because it's just a lot to do and it's had a long day, a stressful day, they'll leave it. That's what the average person does and that is subsequently why they get the average results. What the successful person does, the person that sets the disciplines in place first, knowing they get the results afterwards, they don't care about emotions, they don't listen to their emotions. They do the things that have to be done. Emotion is not part of it. Mentally, for me, I'm able to apply certain disciplines that I can you know, do over and over again. I find it now like, fairly easy. I've built up good habits. In my business, I have done that, but I still struggle with certain disciplines, such as my, my, my health, looking after my things, eating the right things and not eating garbage because I allow my emotions to get into it. You know, I allow me to go home and go, oh, I, would, you know, I really want to be fit and healthy, but I would really like a slice of that pizza right now. I, I, and the emotional part comes in. If I can strip away that emotion from what I need to do, I will see the same successes I've had in my business because I've implemented these good habits, this discipline. I will see that in my health as well. So although we're talking about disciplines and how to build a business, sure, you know, we can, I can talk all day about that. Um, but um, I can't really talk about it from a personal perspective in terms of health and well-being, um, apart from my mental well-being. But uh, I find it hard, and other people will find it hard to implement other things. But as I say, you've got to strip away that emotion, stop giving yourself excuses, start doing the things you're committed to doing and not listen to your emotions. Become the successful person now, and then you'll get the results. Now remember, if it's not sore, it's not painful, if it's not difficult, there is zero growth. And, and one of the key things that it takes is consistency. Do not get disheartened when shit doesn't happen for you after a week or two. Long term action is what's required. That is what's required and after a while you start to notice that things start to fall into place and that's what's going to get it. So consider what you're going to do, what are those standards and disciplines that you need to set. Write them down every day, make sure you're hitting them. If you miss a day, get right back to it. Don't go, I'll start again next week. Do it that evening if you need to. Make sure you remember why you're doing it. You need to have a more compelling reason for doing some of your goals and achieving some of your goals. Are you being honest when, with yourself and it's not to buy the nice watch so that people think that you're doing well and then when you don't do it, then you're embarrassed and your embarrassment goes to anxiety. And as I say, these are the wrong reasons. When you set your standards and your daily disciplines, your habits, it must be for you. It can't be from it for anybody else. It can't be to impress people. When you have your goal, set down your daily habits, your disciplines that you must do whether you fucking feel like it or not, and it's for you and nobody else. How do I stay motivated? Because no one stays motivated. Ask the question, how do I develop the discipline to do the things that I know I need to do when I don't feel like doing them? That is the question.